In the heart of Hubei Province, China, beneath layers of sediment and time, a mystery waited patiently. The year was 1989, and the Earth was about to give up one of its oldest secrets. Two very complete but damaged hominid skulls were discovered at the Yangxian site in China, Hubei province, in 1990 and 1991, among numerous animal bones and lithic industry dated to around one million years ago. Buried in the Yunxian Basin, two partial hominid skulls emerged, distorted, waterlogged, and unlike anything seen before. Not quite Homo erectus, not quite Neanderthal, something older. Decades later, digital reconstruction would reveal a cranial vault over 800,000 years old, a glimpse into a lineage that walked East Asia long before modern humans. Yunchan II was once dismissed as Homo erectus, now shows traits closer to Denisovans and Homo longi. Note, Homo longi, once considered a distinct species, has recently been reclassified as a Denisovan variant based on genomic and morphological evidence. The paper was published in Science September 2025. The phylogenetic position of the Yunxian cranium elucidates the origin of Homo longi and the Denisovans. The new morphological analysis noted forward-facing cheekbones and large cranial volume. From the abstract, in this study, we restored and reconstructed the distorted Yanxian II cranium using recently introduced technology. The results show that this cranium displays mosaic primitive and derived features. Morphometric and Phylogenetic analysis suggests that it is an early member of the Asian Homo longi clade, which includes the Denisovans and is the main part of the sister group to the Homo sapien clade. Yangxian II may preserve transitional features close to the origins of the two clades. The media called it groundbreaking a million-year-old skull that rewrites the origin story of humanity. For decades, the Yunxian cranium confounded Chinese anthropologists. Warped by sediment pressure, it resisted proper analysis, but improved CT scan methods allowed researchers to digitally mirror the undamaged side, revealing its true morphology for the first time. Rethinking Human Origins, Challenging the Out-of-Africa Consensus Dr. Shi Huang, Twitter, May 2024 The final blow to the out-of-Africa theory has just been published. The Yang Xian skull, dated to one million years ago, is more modern than Homo erectus and is likely on the lineage leading to modern humans. Quote, this changes a lot of thinking, end quote, said Chris Stringer, longtime out-of-Africa advocate. Quote, the fossil's blend of archaic and modern traits is striking, end quote, CBS News. CBS, it also, quote, muddies the waters, end quote, on long-standing assumptions that early humans dispersed from Africa, said Michael Petraglia, director of Griffith University's Australian Research Center for Human Evolution, who was not involved in the study. Researchers from the Chinese Institute, IVPP, and abroad proposed a new branch of the human family tree, one that split from Homo sapiens far earlier than expected. The split between Neanderthals, Denisovans, and the Asian clade may have happened hundreds of thousands of years earlier than we thought. 
Chris Stringer has been floating the one million year estimate for the last common ancestor in podcasts and lectures for several years now. And the newest evidence is increasingly pointing to Eurasia as the likely spot for the branching off of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, rather than Africa as originally believed. Please see our numerous videos on this channel covering Miocene ape theory and El Greco Greco Pithecus. The scientists who dare to rethink our origins. Dr. Shi Huang obtained his PhD in genetics at UC Davis in California. He is currently a Chinese geneticist and professor at Central South University's State Key Laboratory of Medical Genetics in Hunan Province. His work has sparked intense debate across evolutionary biology, anthropology, and genomics. Dr. Huang is also somewhat of a media celebrity, appearing on podcasts and YouTube shows, including, for example, Edward Dutton's The Jolly Heretic. Dr. Huang is particularly outspoken on Twitter, and as we have chronicled at the website subspecies.com, Dr. Huang has unashamedly made some highly controversial remarks in the past, particularly in relation to separate origins for Africans. And now a moment of no narration so that viewers may read Dr. Huang's latest tweet. Dr. Huang developed the maximum genetic diversity model. That less diversity can mean closer to origin. This presents a direct challenge to the Africa first assumption. East Asians, for example, show lower genetic diversity, which may suggest a more direct line to a common ancestor. The African genome in contrast, holds extraordinary diversity, which may indicate a very deep and ancient lineage. Dr. Huang has been asserting for years that East Asia may be the cradle of humanity, not the corridor. Huang's critics called his theories pseudoscience, but Yunxiang too has given him a strong evidential basis for his theories. Regional continuity comes into focus. Chinese anthropologists have long promoted a regional continuity model, the idea that modern humans may have evolved locally from earlier hominids. In 1992, a paper published in Chinese journals describe the Yangxian skulls as unusually modern. Dr. Huang has asserted that the Yangxian skulls show modern features, including a flat face and reduced prognathism, traits not typical of Middle Pleistocene hominids in Europe or Africa. In 2011, the BBC released a documentary, The Incredible Human Journey, hosted by superstar anatomist Dr. Alice Roberts. It explored the origins of modern humans, tracing their migration out of Africa. But in China, Roberts encountered a quiet challenge to that narrative. Roberts interviewed China's most renowned anthropologist, Wu Xinxi. He presented his model of a direct line from Homo erectus two million years ago to archaic humans in China 30,000 years ago to modern Chinese. 
Dr. Wu Xinqi stressed the flat faces and reduced prognathism of the 30,000-year-old skull was strikingly similar to modern Chinese, which was hard evidence of regional continuity. Roberts, a vocal proponent of the Out of Africa model, pushed back, suggesting that there were enormous differences between the Homo erectus skull and modern humans. Quote, Professor Wu, I'm a complete novice, but I look at this modern skull here, this 30,000-year-old skull from Joe Caldeon, and this looks quite similar to me to the other skulls from Europe, end quote. Quote, it doesn't look Chinese to me, end quote. Dr. Wu was left searching for words, visibly shaken by the exchange. The BBC cut to a grinning Alice Roberts, and in China's academic circles, his reputation may have quietly taken a hit. Roberts ends the segment, quote, I'm still not convinced that the Chinese are fundamentally different from us. Maybe I'm missing something, end quote. Based on the latest analysis of Yang Xian Tu, it now appears that Dr. Wu may have been vindicated, and Roberts inadvertently may have blundered. Multi-regional now replacing out of Africa? Quote, China may contain the best evidence for supporting the multi-regional model. A couple of skulls dated to roughly 100,000 years ago that seem to possess a mixture of classic Homo erectus and Homo sapiens traits. End quote. Donald Johansson, discoverer of Lucy Australopithecus afarensis. Regional continuity is the idea that modern humans evolved gradually in different parts of the world from local populations of earlier hominids, with traits passed down regionally. Multi-regional theory builds on that, proposing that gene flow within these isolated populations kept them largely homogenous leading to the emergence of Homo sapiens on different continents, not just from a single origin in Africa. Over the past three decades, molecular evidence has increasingly lent support to regional continuity models, challenging the simplicity of a single origin narrative. We now know that Europeans have up to 5% Neanderthal DNA admixture. We now know that East Asians carry up to 5% Denisovan DNA, with Melanesians reaching as high as 8%. The studies have shown up to 19% archaic DNA in some African genomes, ghost lineages, deep divergence. That ghost species could be a late surviving Australopithecine. Fossil evidence continues to match the genomic data, strengthening the multi-regional argument. The Yang Xian cranium, recently analyzed, offers yet another piece of the puzzle, and it points east. To add weight to the evidence, in 2023, Chinese researchers unveiled stone tools from Homo erectus, pushing the timeline back to 2.2 million years ago. From crushed skulls to stone tools to ghost genomes, the silence from the old line out of Africa advocates grows louder. One backbencher paleoanthropologist, Andy Harroys of La Trobe University in Australia, did remark to CBS News that more evidence was needed. Morphology or shape was, quote, unquote, not always a perfect indicator for human evolution. 
But so far, reaction to the Yunxian skull from top Africa proponents and race realism deniers, including Alice Roberts, has been mum. Multi-regionalists began falling out of favor in the late 1970s and 80s. They've been wandering in the wilderness ever since. Dr. Wu held his ground, continuing to advocate for the continuity model till his death in 2021. Today, his legacy stands taller, echoed in the data, and quietly affirmed by the next generation of Chinese anthropologists. Thank you. 